want to talk about our relationship with our children, my children and I. And this includes you who is a parent. It includes you who is a grandparent. It includes you who is an uncle or an auntie or you are a teacher and you are taking care of children. You are a nurse in a hospital. And at that moment, when you are taking care of those little children, you are their parent. And so this touches on all of us, and it is a responsibility that God has given to us. One of the greatest gifts that God has given to man is the gift of bearing children. And God has co-opted us, and he has made us procreators with him. To see little children around us. Little ones that are mingling in our houses and knowing that this one bears my DNA. Hallelujah. Isn't it a wonderful thing? Naangalia sula unaona hii maskio ni yangu. Vana asfue sana. And it is good to have such a gift from God. It is such a wonderful and a joyous thing. People desire to have children. And those who do not have children cry out to God every day to give them the opportunity to be, children, to be parents. In the book of First Samuel, First Samuel and, uh, and, and the first chapter in verse 10, Hannah, in bitterness of soul, wept. And prayed to the Lord and asked the Lord, would you give me a son? And I promise that when you give him to me, I am going to dedicate him to you. And he will serve in your house forever. Children are a joy to have. They are a blessing. And when we see children... We just should see the joy of the Lord with us. The book of John chapter 16 and verse 21. It says that a woman giving birth to a child has pain because her time has come. But when her baby is born, she forgets the anguish. Because of her joy that a child is born into the world. There are no mothers in the house. Because I expected to hear a big amen. I know it. Because I was there when my boys were born. And I asked the doctors if I could enter the labor and delivery rooms. And I saw the anguish that was on my wife's face. And however much I loved her, I could only hold her hand and anguish and sweat as if I'm the one who was in labor. But she was bearing all the pain. But I cannot forget her face when those boys came and bubbling and, and they were there full of life, and suddenly the face that had anguish turned into a smile. And all she could ask is, can you bring him? I want to see him. And suddenly she forgot her pain. That is the joy that God has given to us. And as we speak about children this morning, we must realize that they bring joy, yes, but they come with a responsibility. They are a huge responsibility that God has given to us whenever you are handling children in whichever area, whether you are their teacher, whether you are the parent, whether you have adopted them, whether you are a grandparent, it doesn't matter where God has given you a responsibility to 
nurture children, we better be very careful because God has given it to you for a purpose. So that thought of that responsibility is frightening. To imagine that we hold the key of what each of those children will become. Because children will look up to us. They will look at you as a teacher and they say or imagine in their mind, I want to be like a teacher. Like my teacher, because they look at you and they, they, they think that you are modeling the best. So whatever you are modeling, you are teaching that child to be like you. So you are likely to influence in a great way who those children will become. We have a responsibility of bringing the next generation, a generation that loves and fears God. And that is why in this church, we take our time very, very carefully. We have a very elaborate program for our children because we want to be responsible parents. So we have opportunity for your children from age zero when they come to us, to adults that are sitting here. And that's why we keep on telling you that you're not doing justice when you don't take your children to, to, to the children's church because there is a place there that they can be taught the word of God in a manner they understand. When they sit with you, you're being selfish. And excuse me for that. I'm your pastor, I must tell you. Psalms 127, verse 3 to 5. Sons are a heritage from the Lord. Children are reward from him. Like arrows in the hand of a warrior are sons in your youth. Blessed is the man whose quiver is full of them. They will not be put to shame when they contend with their enemies in the gate. I'm not saying go and fill up your quiver. But I am saying take responsibility. Hallelujah. I am saying that you will be blessed because when they walk into the house and they, and they, they, they are bubbling with joy and they are laughing in the house, your house will be filled with joy. Grandparents know this. You try to hold your children and when they are at the grandparents, your mother or your father tells you you are worse than this. Let them be and they do what they want. Hallelujah. Every single life, every single child is a reward and a blessing. Whether they are bringing their parents' pride and joy, or whether they are teaching to us on how we can be more patient and forgiving, children are a gift from God and a source for the growth of his kingdom on earth. They test us, don't they? If your children are like mine, sometimes they drive you to the edge. Tell God, thank you. I am learning something. And I also want to remind you, you probably were worse. Because they are part of you. Hallelujah. We began by saying they are my DNA. So I hope there is not one single parent seated here who has ever asked their parent, whose child are you? Because God has given them to you to nurture them. Probably the things that you're trying to talk about are things that you have modeled. 
Our concern about children must match God's treatment of them. Because he loves them and he cares for them. He says in Matthew chapter 18 and verse 20, See to it that you do not look down on one of these little ones. For I tell you that their angels in heaven always see the face of my father in heaven. Did you know that God has angels watching over your children? And so whenever you are mistreating children, you are contending with God because he is saying that their angels in heaven are always seeing the face of my father. God listens to the cries and the prayers of children. If you have listened to your children pray, they pray these very innocent prayers. And let me tell you, God answers those prayers. Children know how to pray. We teach them how to pray. They know their father. And you must show them and teach them who their father is. What I'm saying is that children should not be neglected or ignored. Children should not be aborted. They should be protected. Hallelujah. And I'm saying this with a little bit of some pain in my heart. Because it has become a selfish character. That we think about self. And you will allow me to say this because this is an adult congregation. That every time a man and a woman lay together, there is always a chance and a possibility that a child will be conceived. Take responsibility, my friends. You don't get pregnant and say it is an accident. I did not intend it. And I'm saying this carefully because I know that the world is evil and there are other circumstances that a woman can become pregnant. But I'm speaking to you today who says that it was an accident where even parents bona fide, well nurtured parents who know the word of God decide that we want to abort a child because we do not need a child at this time of our career. Those are things that are with us today. The minute that child has been conceived, that child is alive. And God starts to grow that life in you. God has not assigned us to hurt children. But God has given us the responsibility to allow the children to come into this world, to know him. And just like Jesus said in the book of Mark chapter 10 and verse 14, when he said, let the little children come to me. And do not heed them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as this. That God has given us the responsibility of raising children who love and they fear God. So be afraid, my brother, my sister, with the responsibility that God has given to you. And pick it up and do it as a duty, knowing that you are doing it unto the Lord. If you're single and you're not prepared for parenthood, I beseech you, take responsibility. If you want to have children, get married and God is going to bless you with one. But if you go out into the club and you do what you do and you are irresponsible, and then you get pregnant and you come and say, it was an accident. I didn't know what I was doing. 
if such a thing happens, please bring up that child. If you cannot, I'm asking this congregation, can we get into the habit of adopting children and taking care of them? I have taken responsibility myself to take care of children that are not biologically mine because God has called each one of us to be parents. Jesus loved children. He was often accused of wasting time and, and spending his time with tax collectors and sinners and children. But Jesus knew where his heart was. He knew where the heart of the father is. And that is why he said that the kingdom of God is for those who are like these little children. Friends, when you take care of children, you are taking care of God. They are an apple of the eye of God. Hallelujah. We spend time with those that we consider important in our lives. We spend time with our friends. We spend time with our colleagues in the offices. We have time for our business partners and we go into long meetings. We are prepared to spend money with them. We spend time with everyone else except our children. Some of us, we pick the phone and we call home to our house managers. And we ask them whether the children have eaten. We ask them whether they have had a shower. We ask them if they have finished their homework. And then we tell them, when all those answers are yes, take them to bed. I'm on my way. They never have time to see us because we have time with the other people out there. And I'm saying these things with total humility. But beseeching you that the responsibility that God has given you over children must be taken with the seriousness that it deserves. Listen to this. We did a recent survey with our ropes class, our teenagers. These are the, the 12, Pastor Tony, 12, 13, 14. Do you want to hear what they told us? This is this last uh, this last week. And so we asked them some questions. And we asked them to just tell us so that we get to hear what is in their mind concerning you. Listen to what they said. We asked them, what do you like most about your parents? And this is what they said. They said, we like our parents because they work hard to provide for us. They buy us food. And they pay our school fees. Then we asked them, what else? And they said, we like our parents because they are loving and caring. Those are parents of ICC Mara. Would you clap for yourself? But you didn't know this was coming. We asked them, what don't you like about your parents? Are you ready? And they told us, this is not a research from America. This is ICC Imara. This is what they said. They said that our parents are controlling. Especially in the area of career choices. Now these are teens. Can you see how far they are thinking? Friends, I want to tell you, not all of us can be doctors. Hallelujah. Not all of us can be pilots and engineers. I want to tell you this morning that you have carpenters in your house. Hallelujah. We have plumbers in your house. Hallelujah. We have electricians in your house. Hallelujah. We have masons. Otherwise, who is going to build our houses? 
But the way we behave in the house, you think these children don't understand. They said, you are too contrary. They are saying, I want to make my choice. They also said that they do not like that you are comparing them with their siblings. Hallelujah. These are your children. They said that we don't like when we are compared. Friends, we spoke about siblings last Sunday, didn't we? And we said that we are all different. And we are gifted differently. Stop comparing your children. Some of them are dark. Some are brown. Some are tall. And others are short. And so they are totally different. Allow that which God has deposited in that person to emerge. Stop being controlling. This is, are you ready for more? It is good to have feedback, isn't it? And they said that you put too much emphasis on school grades. You do not care to listen if one does not do well. Uh oh. Mm -hmm. Because they are reading for you. What you did not become, you want them to? To become. And some of you, you burnt your books after Form 4. <laughs> Hallelujah. Eh. This is feedback from our children. They said that you are overprotective and very strict. Do you know what they are saying? They are saying that you do not trust yourself. Because if you have taught me to do the right things, I can do them without you having all over me. Trust what you have taught me. Do you know why? Because we have not done a good job. I will save you from more agony. But allow me to tell you this. They said they don't like when you are shouting and blaming them. So when you have a quarrel with your boss, please quarrel in the office and leave it there. Hallelujah. Leave your children out of your beefs. You still have your pastor? Then we, we went further and we asked them, what would you wish your parents knew? <laughs> and they said, we wish they would be more aware of the challenges we face in school. Do you know what they are saying? That you don't talk to them. They are saying you don't find out how their day was in school. That's why they wrote this. And they are burning in their hearts and they are saying we wish our parents would take time and find out the challenges we are facing in school. And if you don't listen to them, somebody else will. What will be the intentions of that other person? They may take advantage of the love that you are not giving your children. This is an interesting one. And they say they wish their parents knew that it is okay to be attracted to the opposite gender. Hallelujah. <laughs> These are ropes. They are telling you we are not blind. Hallelujah. We see and we like. But teach us how to handle it beyond the liking. That's what they are telling us. Mm -hmm. 
they told us that they wish you would understand that you also do wrong things. Stop acting as if you are perfect. To me chabwa kiboko. But it is good to hear from them. These are not stories. This is a survey we carried out with our own children here in Imara. Shall I spare you more agony? We asked them, what would you wish your parents would say or do for you? And they said, mainly, they want to hear words of affirmation. That you are doing well. I am proud of you. They wrote things like they want to hear, we love you and cherish you. They want to hear your work is good. They want to hear you are smart today. We took it word for word. They also said that they would want you to be there for them, especially when they are facing challenges. They also told us that they would wish you will fulfill your promises. Did you hear that? Either you don't make promises or when you make them. They also say to support them in their other pursuits apart from education. Pay attention to their likes and dislikes in terms of subjects and other interests they have. And finally, we ask them, how would you describe a cool parent? And this is what they said. A cool parent is a parent who is loving, caring, understanding, and supportive. This survey was carried in the month of May. Those are your children. Jesus said, let the children come to me. Do you know we assume that children will be happy when we take them to good schools, riding in good cars and having the latest toys and games and living in palatial homes. Those are the things we want to give to our children. You have had the answer for yourself. Because they will leave you there. All the things that you're trying to do, yes, they are good. But the children are saying, secure our lives and teach us the ways of God. Model good life to us. Live a life that is worth us emulating. The Bible says in Proverbs 22 and verse 6, Train a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not turn from it. Good children, my friends, don't just happen. They are trained to become good. That is your responsibility. Let me tell you a little story that is in the book of 2 Kings chapter 5, verse 1 to 19. And there used to be a Syrian commander. His name was Naman who was sick with leprosy. And when his army was out fighting, they captured a little girl whom they brought home and she became a slave girl to his wife. And one day she looked at Naaman and she saw how he was suffering with leprosy and she spoke to her mistress and she said, if only my master could see the prophet who is in Samaria, he could cure him of his leprosy. I know that many times we read this story and we focus on Naaman and we focus on Elisha. And we forget about this little girl who is just called a slave. We don't even know her name. This act that she showed here, she did not need to. After all, she was just a slave girl. 
But this girl, it looks like a well-trained girl from where she came from. She had faith. She probably had seen Elisha touch and heal other people. But she was not selfish. She told her mistress, would you ask my master to go to Samaria? There is a man who can heal her. So what is the character of this little girl? Number one, we see that she was a faithful child, filled with compassion. And we ask ourselves, who had taught her to be compassionate? She must have learned it from somebody. Secondly, she was a benevolent child. A little girl who was stolen from her parents. A poor slave. Yet instead of anger to her master, she felt only love and kindness. Where had she learned this character from? Thirdly, she must have been a truth-telling child. Otherwise, her master would not have believed her and gone to the king and asked for a letter to go to Samaria to look for healing. They must have trusted this girl tells the truth. That's the only reason why a commander would have said, I will listen to what this girl has said. And fourthly, she was a spiritual child. She had not forgotten the prophet. She had not forgotten the power of healing. She probably had witnessed. She was in her slavery a literal missionary. Praise God. Where had this girl learned these things? Do we teach our children values and virtues that will make them stand out? Are we a good role model for them? Friends, the greatest responsibility you have as a parent to your children is to give them time. T-I-M-E. They do not want anything else. If you claim to love your children, please spend time with them. They don't care about your money. They don't care about the things that you're giving to them. They don't care about how many properties that you have acquired in the name of your children. They just want you. Secondly, give your children identity. Be their role models by being a good citizen who genuinely loves and does not hurt her or him. Be available for them to see and to hear. Did you hear what I say? Be available for them to see you and to hear from you when you hear from them because they have questions that they would like you to answer that no one else can answer. But if you abdicate that responsibility, somebody else will come and answer those questions. Thirdly, give them the correct biblical perspective of life. The world is teaching them on every minute new ideologies and behaviors right in your house through the media and the phone that you have bought for them because you are not there. Who will teach the right things if you are not there to correct them and teach them the truth? Four, three, give leadership in your home. Do you have some beliefs in your home? Or your children can pick up the philosophy of the neighbor's home and make it part of their lives because there is no leadership in their own home. Number five, be there for your children to know you. And I mean exactly that. Because some of us think that our children know us, but they are saying you do not know us, neither do we know you. And I don't mean they don't know your name and your telephone number and where you work. They are saying, Dad, Mom, I do not know you. Are you a stranger in your own home? God forbid, has your children or your child ever called someone else mommy or daddy? 
Because that is the person they see. Because sometimes we are so absent that they hear other children calling their mom, mom, or dad, and they think that that is the dad. This other guy who is in our house, he is a resident there. Bwana asifiwe sana. Hallelujah. May God help us. Six, pray for your children. Pray for them. Let your children know that there is a God in heaven who protects them, who provides for them. Teach them to wait on God. Amen. When you don't have, be honest. And tell them, I don't have. Number seven, cultivate or foster good communication with your children. When you're there, your children will always trust and they will feel secure. They will share their secrets with you. When your children become adults, what memories will they carry with them? Will they remember the caring and the loving mom and dad who hugged them and shared life or will they be glad to finally come out of slavery? As I close, I want to read a letter to you. This letter was written by a girl on the 15th of February, 2017. And she wrote, Dear Mom and Dad, There are not enough words in the world to describe how thankful I am for you. You both have helped turn me into a woman, into the woman I am today. We have always had a close relationship. But since I have been in college, I have truly realized how lucky I am to have you both in my life. There are a million things I could spend time thanking you for. But here are a few that have meant the absolute most to me. Thank you for always supporting me in my educational journey. I would not be at the university college if it was not for you both. You allowed me the opportunity to make one of the biggest changes in my life, and you supported me 100% during this process. Even though I love it here, every day is not perfect, but thank you for always listening to me complain and vent on the phone when I need an ear to listen to me. Thank you for being there when I had a broken heart, you two were the ones who were there when I was crying in the middle of the night and feeling like the world around me was ending. You both were the ones that tried to concentrate, put a smile on my face. Dad, thanks for taking me to see Lion King, even though you did not want to see it, because you knew it would get my mind off things. Mom, thanks for always reminding me that it is okay to be sad but not to let it control my life. You both have made me realize the kind of a man I deserve. Thank you for always trying to make special memories with me that I will remember for the rest of my life. Dad, thanks for the countless game drives we have gone to over the years. You have instilled in me a love for the wild that will never go away. The memories we have created during these special father-daughter outings will never be forgotten. Mom, thank you for all the road trips we have gone on. I know that you work very hard on planning them and trying to make sure I have a good time. I would never trade in the memories of us singing in the car or you yelling at me because I am not paying attention to the directions. Thank you for giving me a brother. Even though Chris and I may fight and not get along all the time, he is one of the most important people in my life. By giving me a brother, you have given me a friend for life. And lastly, thank you both for being two of my best friends. The older I get, the more fun we have together. Whether we are driving in the car going shags, out on holiday or just sitting at home, you too know how to make me laugh more than anyone else. 
I would have never thought I would be saying I would be saying you two were some of my best friends. But here I am at 21 years old, proudly saying that. Proudly saying that. Thank you both so much for everything. I love you more than you will ever know. Your loving daughter, Nina. Many of us would love to receive a letter like that from our daughter or from our son. But you start writing your letter today. God bless you. Thank you.